Look at who's also <laughs> with me this morning. Good day, New York. I'm Rosanna Scotto. We've got a great show today. Joining me, my co-host, former NASA astronaut, Columbia University professor currently, and Intrepid Sea and Space Museum senior advisor for space programs, Mike Massimino. How are you? I'm doing really well. So it's great do, to be here. Is it, is it correct to say that you're a former astronaut? Because is it like, you know, you, once you're an astronaut, you're always an astronaut. In some ways, NASA likes you to, once you leave NASA, they like you to say former, because in case you say anything stupid, they can't get blamed any longer. <laughs> so they like the, the former title they like you to, to say, so they know you're not still working for the government. I have to say, um, we always love having you on. Oh, it's great to be so here. So tell us about your time in space a little bit. I was, uh, it was magical. You know, we have people going uh, this evening in a, a slightly different voyage, different circumstances and so on. But uh, with me, I was a career astronaut for, uh, for 18 years. By the way, from to Long Island. From Long Island. I grew up in Franklin Square, Long Island. Yes. Went to Cary High School. Uh, but you know, it, was, it was magical. I got to spacewalk. I got to work on the Hubble Space Telescope. And I got to be part of a great team for, for many, just many years and just wonderful experiences every day. How long were you in outer space? My missions were two weeks at a time. With the space shuttle, that's about how long those, those missions and were. And how many times did you do that? Two times. Two missions to the Hubble, uh, four spacewalks. Uh, that's that's what I did and I was there for a long time so most of my time was spent on the ground helping my friends go to space that is so cool yeah. but let me ask you about your time in space because Robert Moses is coming up in yeah. a little bit <laughs> and he did this gravity yeah. no gravity piece yeah so do you ever get used to having no gravity you do after and your brain at first you're, you're, you're just kind of wigged out you know your brain's trying to make sense of the world when I went upside down for the first time in space, because your vestibular system, your balance is, you know, is what different. What kind of system? Your 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 inner ear. Oh, okay, thank your you. Your balance system is okay. all as big. That's a big word. It's an <laughs> SAT word. It anyway, is. when you go, when I went upside down, I didn't feel like I was upside down. I felt like the whole room had rotated uh, oh. uh, 180 degrees. That I was that that the room was upside down. It's very disorienting. But after a couple of days, your brain figures it out. You learn how to move around without knocking into things, and it's definitely an adaptation. So. You know me. I like to get down to real basics. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with going to the John? The bathroom. Uh, it is it, it, on the space shuttle is a bit complicated. They they simplified it a little bit. But you, in, in what space, way? How do they simplify? Well, it used it? To, the, the American space shuttle was it, you had to turn the, the 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 toilet on, and it was lots of procedures, and it was easy to break. You wanted to know how to use it. It was one of the last things that you reviewed before going to space was how to use the toilet. So wait, they give you class poopy it, class? It's called potty training. You go to potty training. To learn how, <laughs> they train us to do everything. So in making a meal, how to where to sleep, how to take care of your stuff. They they have to teach you how to live. They try to do the best they can on the ground, and then you figure out more in space. But basically, it's the same way it works on Earth, except it's not a flush toilet. It's more or less a can that you're pooping into, yeah. and you pee into a hose. And, and and now this is the extra advantage. Some of the uh, some of the research they've done and technology they've developed is in water purification. So your your pee will be cleaned and purified and treated so that you can use it again. I so, don't know if I want to use mine again. No, I, I no, it's not <laughs> bad. It takes you have to it's more of a you know, you gotta think about it yeah. not too much. But what we used to say is today's coffee is tomorrow's coffee. Because you're just <laughs> gonna give it and, and you really would get it again. Is it true that astronauts wear diapers? Absolutely. I'm not wearing one now, by okay, the way. Good. I'm not wearing no <laughs> diaper right now. But uh, but yeah, because you can't you, know, you can't get to the bathroom when you're in, when you're launching in your spacesuit. Yeah. You know, the bathroom's not ready to go, and you're stuck there. You can't really. Hey, I need a break. No, you have to stay there. Yeah. And when you're spacewalking as well, and you get used to that, and after a while, you're like this is not a bad thing to have, just in case. You know, in case you need. In New York City, sometimes right. you can't find a bathroom, and that's the way it is in space too. Sometimes you just can't get to the bathroom, so, so you're prepared. Give me an idea. These SpaceX people. That are yeah. going up tonight. Yeah. They're civilians. Correct. So, are they trained properly to be doing this kind of they, thing? They are. They're, they're civilians, but you know, uh, Jared, the commander of this mission, the guy that's paying for this, is a very accomplished pilot. So, I think he's used to working operationally and under high performance and, and dealing with G forces and all that. So, right. I think he's going to be very well, well, well trained and ready to go. But what it really shows, Rosanna, is the age we're living in now. The spacecraft is so automated that you can, with a little bit of training, almost anyone can get inside 
and go do it. So that wouldn't be that way with the space shuttle. It wouldn't be that way with some other spacecraft we've had. But with this spacecraft now using the, the latest technology, uh, it is possible to send people with a little bit of training to space for days. They're not just going up for 15 minutes. Yeah, how, they're how, going into orbit for a few days, for three so days. This crew is going into orbit. They're, going into, they're not going to the space station, but they're going into orbit. And they're going into a high orbit, which is going to break our record. The, where I went to the Hubble, we will go high, 100 miles higher than the space station, about 350 miles. These, uh, this crew is supposed to go up to about 356 miles, so a little bit higher than, than I went to, breaking our record that we held for the 21st century. Are you angry? Are you a little angry? I'm a little no, angry about it. I, I was, and I, I'm I was not like, even I was like, hey, what the heck? You know, come on, just a couple, what is going on here? But uh, about, about this, the record, you mean? But then I was thinking about it. It's kind of nice to have a record that someone might break. You know, that's kind of uh, that's kind of a nice thing. I, well, I'll be I, watching to see how high they actually I, get. I, you know, I got you back on this. Mike. Thank you. Um, and I'm very happy because they are raising money for St. Jude's Research yeah. uh, Hospital, which, if you know anything about this hospital, it's a wonderful place where they treat children and their families for free. And one of the people on board this yeah. SpaceX was a woman who, as a child, went to St. Jude. She had cancer. Yeah, she's a cancer survivor. Was a was was a patient there, and it inspired her. This is the. One of the great things about that story, it inspired her to become a physician's assistant right. at that hospital. Okay. So it's a really good story.